Hi there, welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Apologies for a slight technical issue which caused uh, us to pause play during the second match of the day, which we're about to rejoin now during the second leg with Chris Landman leading by a leg to nil. So back to Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah, Chris not ideal to both players, but... Fifty-six. Yep, we're back. It's only required. Back 20. in action. Unfortunately, Glenn Durant is still here as well. Thank you very much. Fifteen. Christian requires sixty-eight. Level four for Landman. Sixty-four. It's only required five. Yeah, this is a, a no really score. tough leg for both players. I totally Which understandable. You can see the frustration there. All you can do in this situation is just no get score. over the line. Tony required five. And both players look sick as a chip, but two no points score. are exactly the same. Christian require four. How would you handle that situation? I was just about to ask you the same question, actually. If no you'd have gone score. back, I think the key thing to do Tony here, I think the, the respect amongst the players, what they'd probably have done is probably gave these two players a board mm -hmm. and said, you two lads have that board, we'll just share this one for when it's time. Or at least that's what I hope would have happened. Three. So that these Pretty players could have just four. gone in there, tipped over, maybe had a cheese roll. <laughs> Talk about Game sort of... Shown the second leg. I mean, off air, it's been really fascinating speaking with Matt. I mean, joking aside, I know we've had some banter over the past couple of years, but, uh, you know, we've been like just Chris chatting about Trevor. various it's things. And mindset was a big thing we were talking about there, the sort of psychological part of the game and, you know, sort of the effects of One trying to sort of dissect some of my problems that we had and the mindset of the players there after that, you know, that, that long delay, etc. It's not ideal, but sometimes... The, it's uh, it's the one who's you know the one who survives the best, the one who's just got that mind just going. Yes, we've had a break, but you know I can still see the winning line here, and I'm just going to get over it. So, but the the beauty of Dar players, you know, they'll be up and running now. They'll be fast flowing, and you know, be back to normal now. One of the things I was very good at during my time was sort of 59. winning that world championship qualifier or qualifying for something on the last day. The amount of times I did that, and the reason for that. Was because in this sort of situation, I would look at your problems, not mine. And I'd think, everyone in here is nervous. Mm. Same thing with this. I'd look at my opponent and think, you're not, you know, Chris Landman, you're quite a quick player. You don't want this break. You want to stay in the flow. And I'd use his negatives to be my positives. Uh, but, but looking at the pair, of them, I felt like Chris handled it a little bit better. You know, albeit it's only missing a couple of big ones going for that five finish, which, which is always difficult in any circumstances. Um... Well, like I said, that's all we now. We'll use the 19s here. 40. Chris, you record 140. Chris, Chris Lamon will forget everything because he knows after the day he had yesterday, he just wants to get back up and running. And now it's not about averages and probably not even about performance so right now. You know, this one is just about getting over that winning line. Oh, yeah, there's going to be two different. reactions to this. There's going to be two different Chris ways. You know, the person who wins won't care. So he's had problems with the, the outer there. ring. Chris um, Landman. Probably be delighted with a 3 0 score line right now. Tony Newell will be feeling hard done by. Probably gets Tony to throw first. All you've got to do is how strong are you mentally? You know, that, that word gets used so much. We can all hit the 180s and 140s, but, you know, when, it's, uh, when you've 79. had a delay or when there's been a problem or whatever needs to be, sometimes you've got to be really strong in the mind. And I just felt like Chris handled that just a little bit Whoa. better. 180. I always quote a line because it's absolutely fantastic. And it actually came from a movie. It came from the Rocky Balboa film when he says, it's not how hard you can 60. hit, it's how hard you can get hit. Keep moving forward. Both of these players have been hit very hard here with that delay. It's not ideal. 100. But Chris certainly rode those punches quite well. He's come out and he looks like he's trying to get this wrapped up. He can sense the points, can't he? He's like a shark. And that's what I'm saying. I, th I think he just handled it just a little bit 59. better than Tony. I mean, the game just bordering on 50 minutes now. I never thought I'd hear Chris Landman in a match for 50 minutes, though, with how quick he plays. But, you know, for people who weren't watching him yesterday, you know, he's so fluent in everything that he does. He's uh, 
he's a terrific player and he's, he's right at the top of his game right now and he was the outstanding performance yesterday. Because you're going 116. 116 goes in. Eighty. I don't know why, but I fancied that. But Tony's a long way. I think Tony's just going to put this one to bed and then really focus on, you know, winning his next four games. That's that's the positive he's got to take hey, into it. Eighty one. Because you require thirty six. Well, for Landman, thirty six. And he won't care how it, how it goes. It's a Chris four nil victory, Lammon. an exquisite win. Top of the table, he continues his charge. Next up, we'll see for the first time today, Lou Getty against Richard Veenstra. Welcome back. Uh, once again, apologies for that delay in play during that previous match due to an unavoidable technical issue. Uh, Chris Landman winning it 4-0, uh, coming back from that pause a little better than the Bear. Uh, in the first match, Willie Mandigas was in excellent form, a 4-1 win for him against Adam Warner, an average 
in the 102s for him as well. Uh, coming up next, though, it is match three. Luke Getty taking on Richard Veinstra, and Henry Deacon caught up with Veinstra earlier this morning. Richard, day two for you here at the Super Series. How did you find your first day? Yeah, my first day, I won three, I lost two. Missed some doubles here and then, but afterwards, yeah, my first three games were good, and last two games was nah, a little less, but yeah, it's a new day, so new chances. You're here for the full five days. Was Monday for you a little bit about fine-tuning, just learning about this stage, learning about this environment? Yeah, see how it goes, and yeah, it looked look amazing to be here, and uh, yeah, I'll do my best for the whole week, so. You've had a really good 2022 as well, won some titles, you got to the semi-finals of Lakeside. How good and bigger would it be for you to try and have success here at the Super Series? Yeah, it's always nice. If you're playing good, then yeah, it's, it's nice. But yeah, I'll see what happens. It's a learning curve for me here at the Super Series and yeah, I'll hope I will be more here. So yeah. Look forward to watching you play today, Richard. Good luck. Okay, thank you. So it was a, a whitewash win for Veinstra when the pair played their final fixture of yesterday. Can Luke get his own back or will Richard rule again? Talking you through it, a Glenn Durrant and Matthew Edgar. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah, Richard will be feeling quite confident. It was a comprehensive uh, win over Luke Getty uh, late yesterday. Uh, I did see a lot of improvement in Luke, sort of in the, the middle of the day yesterday. Uh, and I hope he's sort of using... Today is a real platform of looking at what the positives and maybe a bit of self-reflection yesterday because my advice would be don't beat yourself up too much on the hockey. Just enjoy the experience. And if you're going to be a little bit harsh on yourself and do it behind the player, he was given an awful lot of head shaking and, and, and whatever. But, you know, on the positive side, I did see, you know, uh, some really good stuff in him at times. And, you know, let's be honest with you, he had a couple of four threes. If they'd have gone either way, he could have no, been sat on the three wins. To throw first. Um, but if Game anyone's on. never seen Richard Veinstra before, I you know, say one of the nicest guys, and I tipped him to win the group, so uh, that's probably the reason why he uh, didn't do a little better yesterday. 430. Um, but if, he'll feel confident in this game, and like I said, it's a new start for both players today. Yeah, I think Henry Deacon was the man who 30. dubbed this moving day. And I think if we are going to see a player move, I think it could be Richard Veenstra. I wouldn't be surprised to see him end the day on top. One I think when we look at the group, Tony and Yorn mentioned in his interview, he felt it was very up and down. I feel that's how I feel with most of the players yesterday, except Veenstra. I think it was probably the more consistent throughout the day. And certainly when he can get his scoring boots on, he was throwing some scary stuff. Yeah, it was a little cold in there yesterday oh, as well. I mean, some players, I, I, I could have played in a sauna or anything there where it was a little bit nippy. I, I, I struggle. So sometimes when you can't, if people are real finger players, of which One Richard is, and if your fingers aren't nice and warm, so you might see them, you know, blown, you, blown on the fingers to keep them warm. Whereas, uh, whereas Luke is a lot more from the, the wrist. 135. Uh, similar to sort of Mandiga's throw. Uh, but if you just watch the fingers of... Richard, and like I said, when the first one goes in, you can expect many 85. one eighties from him. Require uh, very rhythmical. So already better here from Luke Getty in this opening one, but this is where he tended yes. to yesterday when, start, when he had to start Richard moving around the board. 44. Yeah, that was a little sloppy, that, but he has left a two data, but this would hurt. And go down the 16s route, but he did. I noticed Nine yesterday on 144, he hit it 140 to make you think. So this is a big moment already. That's not ideal, so he has to move just to the left of the hockey. He'll move back. And there's that exhale of breath, which I tried to promote. 40. And that's Bridget pretty McGuire, much summed 48. up his day yesterday and missed doubles. And Richard will want to, he hasn't been at his best here, but he'll want to pounce on that. 38. It's missed doubles for both. I think we were spoilt with our first game Luke where it was just 20. an incredible game. It was so good it broke the connection, didn't it? It, was, <laughs> it blew it up. And more Ten. opportunities missed Richard for Luke Getty. You sort of feel that Richard Veenstra is not going to keep offering opportunities. Aim, and the those opportunities day. have Richard ran out Vainstra. as he's hit. Well, Glenn Durant says he's a double that everyone hits when he's on commentary. The double five. Until I said it yesterday. 
Second leg is Richard to throw first. Just, again, yeah, just not... a quick rewind back to what you were saying in that last leg about getting a bit cold and quite fingery. 140. One thing you'll get is obviously if the temperature drops and you sort of, the first thing the body's going to do is it's going to start protecting the core organs, which means extremities, fingers, Four, toes, five. things like that, are going to be getting a lot less blood, which means... They're going to get even colder. Now, when we start to throw with cold hands, the hand's just not going to open. The brain's not going to be able to get that same link and that reaction time. So what you're going to start doing is you're going to start dragging the darts low, which is why I'm a fine One advocate and promoter of the hand warmer in the case because you're starting to drag the darts low. They're starting to stand up a bit aggressively. Get some heat into the hands. Get the fingers hey, three. for the same temperature as the rest of the body. We never think a call. They always think that mine head you kill. This is great stuff from Getty. 140. Richard, you've got 138. No problem. Call this the Della. Well, he never mentions it. Double nine. 120. From Luke, you've got 136. Very similar. Well, it's a great setup by Getty. So Binks has got a decision to make because double nine is not a great dart, and sometimes an indication of how you're feeling. Game show on the second leg. But Richard, Richard he just goes Vanistra. straight in. He blows it as a kiss as it goes in there, I think. And it's two nil to Vinstra. And so sort of the Luke traits of first. yesterday where the Dutchies have really come out. It's a big win for Mandigas, a big win for Landman. And the third Dutchie here is uh, looking rather good here too. 28. I mean, this is a great opportunity. When you look at the back end of the day and you look at those sort of games, you get... He's got Luke Getty here. He beat him 4-0 at the back end of yesterday. If he can repeat that in this game, which the way he's playing is a potential reasonable One outcome. 100. If he was able to do that, he will have four points on the board plus eight legs from that sort of mm. flip-over fixture between the two days. 140. And... I said when can we name this moving day is this moving day for Veenstra I think it might be I think both me and you felt 99. that the top three were, were the ones which are likelihood to reap that caused that real separation in this group but Mandiga's right at the moment is the one who'll be sat there thinking if it is moving day maybe it's moving day for him I don't have much doubt that Landman and Veenstra because they're both very relaxed people you know there's not an awful lot of tension hey, in, in Landman or Veenstra's throw and personality. And I don't see them sort of uh, overthinking or having problems. And that's what the Dutch players sort of introduced as well in the early 2000s, using that bull and a finish. And it's very sensible to leave a, a beautiful finish of 36 there. But I say Getty scoring okay. 18. Uh, he just needs to tighten up his doubles. Once again, he's not from five today. And for a 3 0 lead. 18. Look, you require 109. Opportunity for Getty. He had a couple of opportunities in the first leg to hold his throw, but now you feel this one is essential. And it won't go again. Richard Veenstra straight for the double nine last Bridge time and wrapped it up. 18. If he does that again here, it'll be a double break of throw. Game show on the third leg. Like I said, it's a double. Richard we don't like Vainstra. double nine, but for Veenstra, it was straight for it because the, the concern's always hitting the big nine as well. and there was no problems at all there. Well, I, went, I went for an Italian first. last night Game with on. Luke. Guess what he ordered? Pass. Spag Getty. <laughs> 96. <laughs> I used to be Premier League champion as well, and now I'm forced to jokes like that. I did say last time I was on, hey, we T5. need a tumbleweed button for when you're here. And I'd be spamming that button right now. It's not true about boring, boring. At least I went out last night to 60. the quiz. You haven't even mentioned that yet, how, how we won it. So you're going to say that you're not boring because you went to a quiz. What did you 99. do? 99. Made some amazing YouTube videos. Groovy. Things are looking good now. And what you'll see with Richard, uh, Matt, is that when a first dart goes in, it's just... It's, it's not someone you who aims at the treble 20, which might sound a little bit crazy what I'm trying to say there. It's just all about rhythm. It's just, and if, like I said, he can squirm all over the place, uh, but usually when that first one falls, so you'll, you'll sometimes it's 60. feast or famine with uh, Richard. 
he can hit six or seven one eighties in a match and then you know fly them all over in another one. But he's averaging over ninety again. He just feels it's a job well done right now. Consistency is the key to these groups, especially a three day group and I think that's the hey, one quality want, we've like seen from Beanstra that we've not seen from the others and that's why we're gonna see him make a move. I would not be surprised to see him top of the table, especially when we look at his very last game. He's gonna be against Chris Landman. I yeah. think that could be a battle to see who ends top. Getty, double eight. Getty Go in three, six. the four flag. Luke Getty. Nice bit of sportsmanship there from Feinstra. I think he probably appreciates that Luke's not a million miles away from getting this right. Fifth leg is Luke to throw. And how many first. times do we see that? You get the five on. darts at a double. And then when you just got that one single dart, you pop it in. It's a stupid game, this, isn't it? Well, that's his first Templars checkout as well of the week. A one three six for Luke Getty. The fifth. 100 plus checkout we've seen so far. 100. So that's a stat I expect to see going up today. I was very surprised actually when we look back and we didn't see yeah. too many 100 plus checkouts yesterday. That's the best of the week so far as well, the 136. 134. And he is starting to warm up. He's starting to show us that form that has put Simon Whitlock in his pocket. He had something in his pocket there. 100. He's looking for the beard to be figured. He's not to be feared for Luke Getty, is he? He's very confident against 140. Simon, he'll be playing him probably in the next day or so in the local open. I'm sure Simon's going to have a few things to say. He just, I'm just admiring sort of Luke, just everything he's, he's sprinting to the board now. You can just see he's beginning to enjoy the game. Very similar flights to what uh, Whitlock choosing at the moment. 61. We might have took them out of his pocket and put them in. What a finish this would be. 123. Look, you require 104. For as much as we've talked about how well Luke is playing all of a sudden, you do feel this 104 has got to go. It's a good start. And we had one dart a double last time. 72. Richard, you require 38. The two options here. He went straight for double nine before. It's going to be straight for double 19. Game and that's a wrap. It's mission accomplished Richard for the Dutchies Mesa. today. Big win for Mandigas, big win for Landman, and Veenstra continues that trend. It's Holland all the way at the moment. And next up, we've got Tony Newell, Willem Mandigas.
Hello again, and it's a hat-trick for Holland early this morning in the opening fixtures here on Tuesday at the Super Series. That's after victory for Richard Veenstra, a 92 average against Luke Getty there, a 4-1 win following the 4-1 victory for Willem Mandigas and a whitewash win for Chris Landman in the game before it. So excellent start for the three Netherlands natives. Uh, now Mandigas is looking to match that magic of the morning when he takes on Tony Newell. Uh, when the pair met yesterday though, it was Newell who was a dominant force, taking out this 84 during a victory that ended 4-1 in his favor yesterday. Getting the job done against Mandigas, who made a decent start yesterday, but then lost his following four matches, including this one against the Bear. Uh, as for Tony Newell, well, he was beaten in his opening match 4-0. That interrupted game earlier on, so he's looking to bounce back and rediscover that level that he produced against his opponent yesterday. But Mandigas was on it, wasn't he, in that first match of the morning? Let's find out if he can reproduce something like that in the company of Matthew Edgar and Glenn Durrance. Thank you, Chris. I actually enjoyed that. He said magic, and I quite like the idea of magic Mandigas. I think that'd be quite a good nickname for him there. But this one is going to be a very interesting game in terms of the league table. We're getting to that point where the league table is now taking shape, and one of these two players are going to have to make a move. They are desperate for the points. Tony Newell, desperate for legs. He lost his opening game 4-0 to Chris Landman that was with Mass's disturbance but only average 69 complete opposite for Mandigas 102.714 180s no, and he has yet to Tony miss to a data a double today Game which on. is why we are moving to Edgar's top tips I am going to stick my neck out here and I'm going to go with Mandigas who is coming up at a price at 6 to 5 I think that is massive based on what we've seen so far today Remember to gamble responsible. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. 30. We've got a fantastic Saturday night finals to come, so please come and join. It's free here in Portsmouth. We'd love to see you. All details and all tickets are on dartshop.tv. 99. Looking forward to meeting you all on Saturday night. Come and have a night of the darts. Last opportunity of 2022 as well to come down to the Super Series. So let's see if we can get a nice packed house. And don't worry, Glenn Durant will not be coming out. 70. The bullying starting a little bit late this year. So, Willem Mandigas. Nickname is Wimpy. One hundred and eighty. He's a burger company, actually, doesn't yeah. he? All the burgers shops are. <laughs> well, you said this is the real Will and Mandigas. He has now well, hit five one eighty. In this is his sixth leg of the day. I'm really happy for him, honestly, because you say when I went up yesterday. But like I said, the only positive thing was he was uh, in a local sandwich shop with the other Dutch lads, and it didn't look down. We I can say quite philosophical about it, and I'm absolutely done it. But this is really good from Tony. We have not seen the best of Tony Newell, well, that's for well, sure. We've been saying that off air a little bit. Um, but these are the type of finishes. So the 180 is a nice Willem, but this tops would be the dart of the day. And that's just dipped a so little bit there. That fantastic set up by Newell. He's 32. Game his favourite double. The first leg. Tony Newell. And Edgar's tips. Not looking too good. Well, that was the first dart Will and Mandigas has missed at a double so, so far today. To he was four on four in his opening game with Adam. Tony Newell lands his first double of the day because he lost 4-0 in his opener. So, hey, complete turnaround in that respect. But it was a holder throw for Tony. If Willem is to win this game, he's going to need to find a break somewhere. And in these short format games Ooh, you don't get too many opportunities so it'll be interesting to see how big of an opportunity that tops was in the opening leg you'll see at the top of your graphic there it says best of seven Means it's just a race to four legs yeah uh, you know the, my only concern for willem is that he did this yesterday not in the style of that opening game but by far his 86. best game of the day yesterday was his opening game um but he's averaging just shy of 95 at the moment, albeit 
one nil down and that throw looks Sixty. a lot better than it was yesterday um and there's a little bounce in his step there they're the all the little things i'm trying to look at and get across to you the viewers and people listening in just how they're trying hey, how they're he feeling great. right now when i say will be feeling really good but there'll be just a niggle in his mind that yesterday after that first game i didn't really kick in and that can't Bill, happen today not? so every time he hits a little one like that them concerns can just magnify One hundred. He's certainly looking a lot better in this game. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, his first game was heavily disturbed, and he didn't deal very well with that distraction. But he's Sixth. managed in a very short turnaround because he's only had that Luke Getty Richard Veenstra game. He's managed to recompose himself, and I suppose that's the positives of somebody who's Ninety-six. been on the tour for the length of time that Tony Neal has that experience. Were you surprised to see him favourite for this game? After the averages of the of the opening first games, I don't really set up there from Man Digger, sorry, Matt. I don't think it's just the the first games. It's what we saw yesterday as well. Although Tony Newell did win this game yesterday, four one, but it was very under par from both Bullseye, and he's got a nice little marker in there when he comes over to the left. Oh, that is harsh. I think that was in. I think when that was in the two o'clock of the ball. Is it one of the negatives of having that fat barrel that he has? Oh, absolutely. Already swinging around the boards and now going in the first game. And it's that's why we love this game of darts so much. We looked uh, in four from four in the doubles last time. North from three, a big dart already. 30. Willem, you require four. And he had no luck yesterday, Willem. And them kind of misses there from Tony, but that's not very nice just to sit on top. He's had to move across the hockey. Game show on the that's second a leg. Stunning dart there. Willem All Mandigans. the luck that he didn't have yesterday, be thinking right now, you know, they were, they were finishing against me yesterday, but Tony just gave me a chance there. Maybe it's my day. Moving Tuesday. Feel like it's Tony to throw Is it Willem Mandigas Tuesday? On. Opportunities have been handed out by both players so far, and opportunities have both been missed. Either one of these players could have gone 2 0 up. So you'd say one all's a fair score line. Mandiga's missing a dart at tops. Tony Newell having that very unfortunate bullseye. Hey, and then do you want? Missing two darts himself at the tops. Willem's Walk on Music is one of my favourite songs. Tremor by Dimitri Vegas, Fair like Fair Mike Fair. and Martin Garrix. Absolute classic. Do you want to give us a... I've not heard that. Could you just give me a, a brief sample? Hell has gone and heaven's here. <laughs> 134. It's been a good week for you, actually, hasn't it? You've won the bingo. You've you've won the quiz. 104. Yes, enjoying my can of coke now. I won for the bingo. I'm not bitter about that. 140. Yeah, the Motor Super Series team. We walloped the quiz last night. I was absolutely rubbish. Some very intelligent people on the team, but it was a lot of it was music. Or to me, it was racket. William, you've got 146. Oh, this game is warming up now. A 134 140 for Willem, a 140 131 for Tony Newell. Hey, it's a very three. impressive Tony, sequence of 12 darts. The setup play in this game has been really good. This one twelve would be nice. Another dart at tops. Seventy-two. Was Will that he require sixty-three, 63 earlier? I just missed out on the tops. So we go for the thirteenth route. That's not the end of the world. So fat seventeen. Now he's had this opportunity at tops before. Game show the This third time you just Will suddenly beginning to feel maybe today's the day for Mandigas because. As much as I spoke about his pedigree yesterday, like it's he was very first. disappointing. Game on. Today looks like the man to beat. Sixty-eight. And I quite like the disappointment there. For me. There was no emotion from him yesterday, as if he didn't really, not really care. But I just, I just don't think that lack of One match practice. Is, he sort of forgot how to play match play darts, and right now he's gritting his teeth and. It's so much better darts. I think um, when you say he didn't care, I think 
what you're saying is just an acceptance yeah. to the negativity. Oh, okay, I, I don't expect to hit anything. If I don't hit it, I don't what? hit it. But said, this game is warming up. Tony Newell with his fourth 180 of the week. Well, and Mandigas just can't what? stop hitting them. It's his third of this game and his seventh of the day so far. Owen Binks is going <laughs> to need some strepsils. I was just about to say that. Will he require 73? Now, this is the boring, boring does a bit because the 180 is great. But if he hits this top here. Game That's even more impressive play. for me, that 73 finish, following that 63 finish. This is the guy who won out of his won out of his five games yesterday. He looks like a different man. So many people ask me, how can I be first. so good on one day darts and the next day not able to win a big 20? Well, this is the this is the reason why we love this game. 85. Twenty-three. One eighty. One eighty. Mm. Twenty-three. They are the last three scoring visits of Willem Mandigas. Can you make sense of that one? Forty-five. Like I say, a lot of these fluent players, and so many of them from Holland as well. When the first one goes in, there's no way this is going in a one or a five. Eighty yes. one. <laughs> yes. I am so good at this job. One hundred and twenty-five. Never mind Edgar's top tips. There's something about my uh, predictions. This is good stuff from Willem. Ninety-five. And obviously Edgar's top tips only come out when there's plenty of value around. I won't be giving you one to five shots or one to seven. I'll just 80. point you in the direction when we see a bit of value come in. A three will hurt a little bit because it's left the bogey one six six. I'm surprised that Willem One didn't start on the 100. 18s there because a treble 18 and a treble 20 will, would, would leave a 170 finish. But you do feel that Tony needs a treble here. 100. He pings that with the last dart. And all Willem can do right now is put some pressure on him. And that's the kind of opening dart that he love. I'd stay there. 140. Tony will 66. Tops. 46. Low. So this is match opportunity 62. here for Willem Mandiguez. 62. We get two darts for the match. 46. It's only required 20. Bit of fortune here for Tony Newell. Often, a little bit of fortune is all it takes to turn a game completely around. He's come right round that dart. No score. To bend that one, a bit David Beckham of darts. Will it require 16? And as a dart player, it's all you want to hear. Mandikas, who's been really good this morning. That's a good marker for him. He just has to move over a little bit, but he's a much thinner barrel there. No score. the perfect angle of just going the agony. It's only required it's 20. Definitely not in, Willem. Just see the confidence sapping out of Tony, can you? Every missed dart or a double. Ten. William, you requires 16. Yeah, one in 12 is not going to win you too many games. A return of just 8.33%. For those of you that follow Edgar's top tips are holding their breath. No score. Tony required 10. Match darts again. He's missed two handfuls here to get this one wrapped up. No score. He will score. get another handful. William, you require Double eight. 16. For the match, for the points. Important moment. He'll hit this. Done Game and dusted. The, the Willem Mandigas charge continues. It's moving Tuesday. And Holland are taking over today. Four out of four from the guys. Is Richard Finch going to make it five? An exciting match not to miss next. Adam Warner, Richard Vinstra, very, very soon.
This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And it has been super stuff at the Super Series this morning from the three Dutchmen in Group A. Uh, we'll take a look at the table after Willem Mandegas won his second match of the day. Both of them 4-1. And you can see there he's risen now to fourth spot in the table. The other two Netherlands natives, top and second in Chris Landman and Richard Veenstra, who we are going to see next taking on third placed Adam Warner. Uh, the pair of them on the same points, but when they met yesterday, it went the way of Warner and Howe. A 107 to win the match 4 0. A whitewash win for Warner, the ADC qualifier, yesterday. Brilliant stuff from him. But as for today, uh, it's been a 4 1 loss for him in his first match against Mandigas and a 4 1 win for Veinstra in his first match against Luke Getty. So, how will the pair fare in this one? Let's find out with Glenn Durrant and Matthew Edgar. Yeah, it was a really interesting game yesterday for Adam Warner. And uh, my conclusion of the game was a surprise victory for Adam Warner over Richard Veenstra, of which I had a few of his friends send me a message saying it was no surprise to them. So keep them questions coming. Keep that analysis coming. I want to know more about Adam. Uh, but everything so far has been really positive about him. Now, he has come off a, his first defeat. Um, where he's potentially looking at two defeats uh, in a row, all beat against Mandigas, who was absolutely brilliant, and so yeah, was Adam. Adam to throw but I guess the last person you want to see on. in front of you then is uh, Richard Veenstra. So he needs to take all them positives from whitewashing uh, Veenstra yesterday, and, uh, and he's straight back in there. Very, very positive. 140. Yeah, I think the whole experience so far from Adam it can only be described as positive, and... Let's hope that continues. We will be seeing him for the rest of the week. We'll see him today and tomorrow in Group A, and then we'll see what happens Thursday, Friday. He'll hope that you don't see him Thursday, Friday, because if that happens, it means he's won this group. 140. I'm just thinking what it's like in the back room where you've got a couple of friends with you. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of the three Dutch lads here because they're hey, on fire today. You, you know, they've played 4-1-4 four, four between them today. Um, personally, I don't think I'd be liking to play my friends. I would want to be the odd one out of the six where I don't really know anybody or, even better, dislike somebody. 132. Um, we've been the odd one Obviously, they work, the reason they travel together and they're going to enjoy themselves together. But so far, they've, yeah, they're doing really well. 59. Adam, you require 89. Pinged this yesterday, this 89, in two darts. It was beautiful. I think that was exactly the same spot. 57. Richard a long way, so there's no need to panic just yet. It's not often people outscore Veenstra like this. No, he did six. yesterday in four legs. Adam, you require 32. So far, so good. You'll know yourself, there'll be certain times or certain players that you just sort of enjoy playing against. There's something about their pace or their demeanour that you just seem to like. And No I score. If Adam's Richard starting to get those vibes against Veenstra. What he is doing well, he's not, again, similar when he played Mandigas, he, he still stayed at his pace. No, he's a tendency when you're playing someone a little bit quicker. 32. If anyone is suffering with a cold, it does seem to be Adam because he keeps warm in his arms and his hands. He was yesterday. Uh, it's definitely warmer in there today. Doesn't get much closer than that. No score. And that hurts, doesn't it? Richard, when you've had 50. eight darts at a double like that, and you know some of them, they're not bad darts, and then you just watch when someone has a dart like this. Game show on the first hurts. leg. So let's see Richard what Adam's Langstra. all about. It. In a crazy way, it's nice to see what Adam how he reacts yesterday. All we can do our analysis was of 
how wonderful he was yesterday, Second how like great the day was. Reverse. But let's see yeah, what he's like now after losing one game and then losing a leg in a you know in a, in a leg he should have won. Yeah, I asked that very 60. same question up on the balcony this morning before a dart was thrown with Chris Murphy. I says, yesterday he surprised us. Today we're almost expectant. And it's a completely different world that he is in today. And to be fair Four, to him, Z3. he threw 100 average in his opening game. Mandiger's 102. They are the only 100 averages we've hey, seen so far won. this week. And he was defeated with his 100.28. He only got two darts at a double despite throwing 100 average. And then he's coming to this one. He's scored extremely strong. He's gave himself the opportunity. He's missed eight darts at it. Vintra's picked his pocket. And Vintra's the guy I expect to see movements from today. And nice. He's he's reaction now, isn't it? The question marks. We're throwing them out there. So, when I get the call to see you commentating with Eric TV this week, I thought this is a great opportunity to really uh, get some interaction with social media. One so, we're on Twitter, hundred. MSS Darts. You can join me at Does a 180. Let's get some questions. Let's have a bit of chat Fair about the Motor five. Super Series. Any questions at all? I'll pop one here. We've had a couple already. Uh, for Matt, I have a bit of dartitis. Any tips on how I can get my old throwback? I don't think you want your old throw. You want a current 60. throw. Um, dartitis is obviously just a, a loss of the timeline. We've got our present, our past, and our future. And we need to concentrate on the present, not think about what the future holds or where the dart's going to land or a previous throw. It's about producing in this moment. So think of those three tenses, past, present, and future. Write them out on a bit of paper and make notes in each category. Four, and you'll see five. where your mind is and Richard, where you're thinking. Requires you need to try and get those thoughts into the present. So how can you change that terminology? He was really good on these combinations Game yesterday. And Vinch was just sort of Richard continual type of day he had yesterday. He said he wasn't too happy with the three wins out of five. I think he knew he was you know, a joint so favourite with Landon. Game on. But already, but what I like is just the whole... Uh, the whole package with Richard. He's just very laid back. He doesn't show an awful lot of emotion. Um, but a superb dart player. Another question was, Glenn, will we see a new player in the Super Series next year? Fifth, Quite you know. honestly, right now I'm taking sort of one week at a time. Uh, I've got the world seniors to really practice for now and get myself ready. It'd be great just to be enjoying darts again, just to be competitive and learning how to win again. I'm back playing local league and some Super One League stuff hundred. as well. That's planned for next year. Um, so I think, I think I'm think i entitled to try and enjoy it a little bit. I, I said at my local local news uh, paper, you know, I, I feel like I've done my bit for Teesside. Uh, there's so many young players coming through now. And if I can sort of mentor, chat to them and you know help promote them, uh, and if any of them get the chance to come to Moda Super Series. 60. We saw what it did for Richie Parkin a couple of weeks ago. Like I said, I would love to see plenty of northeast contingents up here. Fifty. He said earlier on today that you feel like with Richard Beanshaw, it's sort of all or nothing. I'm just actually casting my mind over results, and it's more bizarre than I thought. So he won four one against Mandiguez. He won four nil no, against Tony no. Newell. Then he lost four nil. Then he won four nil. And then he's 1 4 1. I think I said feast or famine. Six. Like I said, I've watched him 120 averages he was doing at one point at the, uh, in Lakeside. Um, but he's got a 4 0 sandwich. But it's, 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 a nice, it's a nice feeling to know that that A game is there. It's that, no, it's that word consistency five. then. Uh, how, how often you can get that A game out. Um, Setting up players been really good today. And, and he did that yesterday, leaving, uh, leaving double two. It just makes Adam think. So 87, if you're looking at treble 17 here. That leaves 78. So you might double double or th traditional treble 18. So all you can do now is set it up. 47. And that 180 from Veenstra leaves double two. Game shot in the third. You mentioned that it makes him Richard think. It Venture. doesn't just make him think. It also makes a lot of noise. Owen Binks gives it the big 180. And 
I've seen this tactic well, played Richards a throw first. before on the stages yeah, as might. well, because not only do you get the noise from the big 180 of Owen Binks, you actually get the noise from the crowd and the reactions. And obviously we don't get that here, 60. but certainly you are very well aware that your opponent all of a sudden has just come right up onto a double. And Beanstra, when we speak about doubles, that is a double break of throw. And these massive score lines Nine, that he seems to be seven. involved in one way or the other, Looks like it might be coming in again and in his favour in a retaliation to the 4 0 that 60 he had yesterday when Adam beat him. Yeah, part of the quiz team last night was Owen and Charlie. Both do a fantastic job as referees, and it was interesting to sort of chat with them about their dreams and their aspirations of reaching the very top in their field. And I, and I said, I'll never forget the day I was a BDO player uh, at the Grand Slam and. Uh, Russ Bray was the referee, and you know he belted out the 180. And I, I turned to my family, was like, "He just shot with a 180 for me." So uh, I know I'm a sad man. I know that. 45. I didn't really go. Ooh, I'm more manly than that, you know. Power. Yeah, we've seen the photo from the Premier 60. League. How do you think Adam's feeling right now? Crest of a wave yesterday. He's staring down the barrel of a, a whitewash here. As long Aye, as he's not he thinking fine. what's gone wrong or what's different, it's positive. Because you can get into that, can't you? Where you think, yesterday, that was me. I, I'm the guy that joined top of the table. And, you Four, know, we did speak, was it an overachievement? I mean, was that the real him? We've heard that he can do better than that, but... In this environment, you just do not know until you're in it. I'm hoping that he's still taking positives. He did average 100 in his opening Nine, game despite four. the defeat. And not too shabby in this one. I call him like an intelligent dark player. Four, you can see the, the way he speaks Adam, and everything about it. But sometimes that can sort of lead to sort of overthinking a little bit. But he's got to remember he's only been traveling, you know, just... Despite what he's done, sort of practically, he's only been travelling for 12 no, months. Score. You know, this Richard, you everything he sees this week. I always say you never lose, you learn. And I think that's really important. Everything he's part of self-reflection. He's the 1-3-2 finish from Richard Feenstra. 100. Adam, you require four. A nice smile there from Adam. I think he really needs this tops right now. Just, just to get him up and running more than anything. Game show on the fourth leg. And the crowd Adam goes wild, Adam. I do like his personality. I think a couple of times I called him quiet and softly spoken. And I was said he corrected Adam by his right friends. First. And you can just sort of see Game the on. type of character that's in there. And like I said, even despite losing 3-1, you just feel like he's enjoying every moment this week. Yeah, 13 darts needed to get his first leg on the board at the double. But 60. Kickstarter for him. Quite interesting. You said he was a an intelligent young man, which, when you think about it, one hundred and forty started playing darts at university, which means he'd probably have had to have a diploma first and get up his UCAS points, get into university, and I don't think many dart players can boast that resume. Ninety five. One hundred and eighty. I think the seeds are finishing line now. One forty, one eighty. Feast or famine? You're a fan of music. Who who was it who sang that? Eighty-five. Because I want it all or nothing at all. Me a fan of music. You should have seen me at the quiz last night. You might use the twenty-five bed here. Ninety-four. But it's Richards to lose from here. As long as he doesn't start. Thinking he's over the winning line already. So he's arguably looking at six darts from here, unless I think I'm ping this. 105. It's a nice one, five, six finish. So that, what that probably means that Richard will now incorporate the bull if he missed that treble. Game shot but that match. is a proper job, Richard a proper finish. Vincent. The Dutchies continue this massive charge they're on. We talked about moving Tuesday. Right now it's Landman and Vinstra feeling really, really good. Next up, Landman, top of the table versus Luke Getty.
Welcome back. It's time for a quick chat with Matt. Matthew Edgar here, Christmas jumper and all, to reflect on what's happened uh, so far today. And let's have a look at the league table to do that, Matt, because top of the tree, if you pardon the pun, is Chris Landman, but now he's joined by Richard Vainstra, who walloped Warner before the break. He's walloping everyone at the moment, isn't he, Richard Vainstra? And I think he's the man that we're going to look at in terms of making a bit of a move today. I fully expect to see him at the top of the table come the end of today. And he's got that game at the end with Chris Landman, which I think will be the match to see who ends top of the table. Yeah, it's been Dutch destruction, hasn't it? All five matches won by Netherlands players. Yeah, and... When we look at the day and we look at what we said at the start of the day, Adam Warner was someone where I've said I've got a little bit of concern about because we did he overachieve yesterday. At the moment, it's looking like maybe he did and it'll be interesting to see how he bounces back from those defeats. Yeah, uh, next match is Landman against Luke Getty. Now, it was bottom against top, wasn't it? Uh, a, a remarkable result. Um, yesterday, Getty winning with a 91 checkout. Uh, do you see him being able to do that again? Well, it's the only victory he's got so far, isn't it? And he's not really produced what we've heard from people around saying what he can produce at his very best, and uh, I've got concerns. Concerns for Getty. Chris Landman looking to put a bit of daylight between himself and the chasing pack. Luke Getty trying to avoid getting cut too far adrift by going back-to-back -back against a league leader. Apologies for the Edgar, sh Edgar jumper there. Absolute disgrace. It's closer to Easter, isn't it? This was Luke Getty's biggest moment yesterday. He was beginning to write him off before he played Chris Landman yesterday. He'd done a comprehensive victory, and I had real high expectations after that. And they're the kind of positives he's got to feed on right now, because Chris Landman just seems to be in a in a real zone right now, and he has that type of personality that, you know, when 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 his arm's going well and he's he's playing well, he can just run away with things. And a lot of lot yeah, to do with that is the fluency that he has, the speed that Game he has. On. You know, within seconds, he sort of, you know, he's won a leg against you from nowhere. So, big job ahead of Luke. 125. He needs a spark. He needs something right now. And uh, beating top of the table would just do exactly that. And the man with the dodgy jumper 45. is back. Lent it off you this morning. I don't know what you're on about. 60. You'd be telling me it's uh, flashes, son. Saving that for the end of the day. So when I go up on the balcony at the end of the day, I'm going to turn the battery on. 85. We'll flashy tree. We need to sort this door out as you walked out. There was a real squeak as you left. 123. Jordy, if you're listening, help me. Your assessment on Getty so far, then? 140. Oh, it's a tough one because I'm sure he's got this A game that we've not seen yet. But based on the stats and everything we've seen so far, what he's done here, what he's done in the Super League, what he's done on stats where we've got recorded averages, which requires 16. he's kind of playing to type. No that, score. And that has bust the score, and that's just going to cripple the average. I call that the Paul Hogan. That uh, changed my life exactly where that landed there. 100. Chris requires 16. So I have another go. Double eight. Oh, he's nearly yeah. done it again. Maybe to the fours, eight. and we've got a chance five. here to. I did sort of say yesterday he didn't have Landman as a fault. Sometimes you can stand behind him thinking he's don't have a lot of confidence with him on the doubles. He's proved me wrong an awful lot this week. But if there's one area of the game you can look at where 77. He, can, he can work on something, it's certainly these doubles. Game show. Double two's been good for him. Chris Landman. He'll be happy to get through that because uh, sometimes you get them bogey players. I wonder if it's on his mind that Luke... You know, really kept his best to play Second Chris yesterday. To to I just have that sense that Chris just plays the ball. Yeah, I think if, and this is pure guessing and speculation, but based on the outcomes Aye, that I am seeing too. in the Luke Getty game, I would suggest that his practice and preparation 
doesn't so quite have the intensity that's required to compete at the highest level at the moment. No, and I think he needs to look at his routines. He'd probably score 45 now, but I'm very happy with his scoring. Aye, won. I don't. I think his scoring's been absolutely adequate. Fine. Um, I just get the feeling he practices an awful lot on. The 180s are fantastic, uh, but if Luke could have had his doubles or a better percentage on his doubles, he could be further up this league. For me, it's the setup play. From when he gets Six, to about yeah. 230, 240, to getting to the double, that's taking him nine darts most of the time. It's too long. And I think that's when we start looking at the board mastery. And for me, 60. I just vision that he's in the practice room just throwing at treble 20 for an hour, two hours, however long he has. This is what he does for his... He's practicing his practice. 180! Good point, Matt. Good point. 45. Look, you require 98. 180 has given him an opportunity here to hold his throw. 58. Chris, you require expect him to have another opportunity. Three darts at top. So Landman back on 156. And that opportunity will present itself. 100. So top. Looks to require 40. To get a leg on the board. We've got one against Richard Beam. He's got one leg. against Lambman, but he's going to hope to add to that column and really shake up that top of the table because Chris Lambman is his game reversed. in hand. So game a win on. here will give him not only the points advantage, but he's already ahead on legs. 66. Get he can get the win here or really tighten everything up and take a couple of legs off the column of landman that is a very well thrown dart there's a bit of zip in that One throw and you just knew that was going 80. second of the match for six getty it was the same scenario yesterday it was top versus bottom and like i said many of us wrote off luke getty 45 Be the same again because he sort of stole the throw until 140. That 140, but he is only 40 points behind now. See, I would assess that as he has got the throw, other than the fact that single 100. five means he needs an extra treble. If that was yeah. a straight 20, it would have left 161. Whenever you stray off that 20 line as a pro player or an international standard 130 player, when you come off that line, it means you need an extra treble yeah. just by not staying straight. 100, because you require 98. Double 12. Game shot on the third leg. Chris Landman. He nods his head there, but inside he'd be a little bit frustrated because, you know, he scored really well. A couple of hundreds right at the end to leave him that well, 76. Luke to throw first. But honestly, the, the point I'm trying to get across is that when you are bottom of the league, you just don't seem to get them opportunities yet if he was top. You know, them sort of opportunities just come, oh, come across. But he's not giving up. This is the best of Getty. That's for sure. He's averaging over 97, just shy of 98 now. 100. And they talk about averages, wins games. You try and explain why there's 10 difference there. But you're losing 2-1. 95. Getty has already hit more 180s today. Than he did yesterday. 140. So, we're looking for positives and we're looking for things to build on. There's the first one. I think we both agree there's nothing at all wrong with his score. 140. What will be interesting now is how he plays with this 86. Because it's sort of set up players finishing. Hasn't Six. has been the weakest of the it four players, uh, the six players. But he needs that spark. Bullseye or treble 14. Because he's on 201, it made sense to go the 46. bullseye route because the second best option was le to leave a one dart finish. As we see the way Landman throws a dart. 130. Put some pressure on Luke. Luke. 40. And when you're 2 1 down, that pressure's sort of increased a little bit. You just have to focus on that. That's not a bad dart. He just has to follow that in now. So the He's had the weight of both darts very so different 20. there, and that just makes that double 10 doubly difficult. And he probably knows what's going to happen next. 
Game show on the fourth. I just think that Chris sums up Lamb. Luke Getty's week in them three darts there. A leg he should have won. He looks up. 76 finish last time. If leg it's Chris 71 to finish first. this time. Game on. Sometimes it's just not your day. Yeah, he had three 60. straight darts there to level that up. And I want to say, didn't really scare it too much. Very high, very low. Obviously, just a little bit of nerves and tension coming in, see, sensing the opportunity, and he wasn't able to convert. And now, Landman has the darts. 80. And he's going to be looking at wrapping this up, and wasn't quite Gary Anderson, Phil Taylor there, where he lost 180, but he certainly lost 60 points. And locally, we'd call that 80 floor. 96. He's very quintessentially Dutch as uh, Landman, but the only difference is he just very rarely moves off that 20 bed even when he covers it and goes you know you're looking at the 19s where many of the dutch players over the year they really use the 19s 18s and even 17s and bullseye so much more now 45. even in the 300s landman if you just watch him and that's the beauty of being sat in this seat you get up close and personal with these players even though i've no, known him for so six. many years you just sort of see the the little part of their game that you probably didn't know about but uh He's pretty much just players on there, but it's certainly working for him. 85. He's in a great position. 25. The two wins out of two today. 65. And that'll do nicely. Yeah, the two players that was top of the bookies predictions before the start of this group look to be the two players that are now starting to stamp their authority on this group. Tops. Game and that is a canny performance, match. we'd say, in the North Chris East. He'd be Lambert. very happy with that. And the first player to reach 12 points. It's looking very, very good for Chris Landman. He's got a smile on his face as he leaves the stage. Next up, Richard Veenstra, Tony Newell, with this Dutch domination continue. So Chris Landman's lead is stretched here at the Modus Super Series and the Dutch domination uh, continues. Landman 
top of the table after winning that match against Luke Getty, getting his revenge for defeat yesterday and comprehensively as well. A 4-1 win, which sees him pull clear by two points from his fellow Dutch player, Richard Veenstra, who looks in fine fettle today. Adam Warner, third. Mandigas has had a great start as well. He finds himself in fourth place. And in fifth is Tony Newell, who Richard Veenstra is going to take on in the next match. Now, as Glenn and Matthew have been saying in commentary, Veenstra has kind of been the all-or-nothing man. He lost 4-3 to Chris Landman in his first match yesterday, and then every match since has been a maximum of five legs, um, including this fixture yesterday, which he won... Sorry, which he lost 4-0. But today, he produced a brilliant 11 data to get back at Adam Warner for one. So then, takes on Tony Newell in this one. Uh, Newell hasn't really got his bearings so far today, winning just one leg in the first couple of matches. And, well, will it be famine or feast this time for Vainster if he's going to carry on that trend? Let's find out. The match will be described by Matthew Edgar and Glenn Durrant. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Tony Newell is probably the one player out of the six who is more frustrated than anyone. I think with someone like Lou Getty, he's getting all the experience he needs uh, with this week, and he'll see the positives despite uh, his league position right now. I think Tony will be a little bit confused. He is the ADC Players Champion as well, uh, which he won in Reading, a £2,000 prize. Uh, so he, he sort of come here, despite not playing as much as he has over the years, he said he felt in really good shape and uh, fancied a real good run this week. No, but it hasn't to happened Richard yet. To throw first. Uh, and Game on! Once again, the last person you want to see in front of you is someone who's absolutely flying from the Flyers. 140. Yeah, I mentioned at the start of the day that I think Richard Veenstra is going to be the man that moves today. Would not be surprised to see him top of the table. He's certainly playing like a guy who's heading that direction. Two victories today, both by the scoreline of 4-1. And looking quite comfortable in doing so. Even the leg that he lost to Luke Getty was when he had to do that clutch 1-3-6 finish. I don't know about you, Matt, but it just whets the appetite of Veenstra versus Landman. 47. Later on today. Could say that's the main event of day two. One hundred. I'd love to hear your feedback. Don't forget, get involved with us. I'm with the social media king here. I'm going to be on his uh, YouTube channel on Thursday hey, as well. I'm going to look at some Ali Pali stuff. So I'm going to have a little bit of a giveaway. Just all I want you to do is follow MSS Darts. Get involved. Let's have a discussion about anything that you're watching. Any questions that you have, we're happy to answer absolutely anything. I've had one say, can we meet you on Saturday night? Well, just go to Dart Shop TV. Tickets are absolutely free. 100. Rich Come and make it a fantastic a atmosphere for our last Saturday night final of yeah, 2024. And if this guy Richard is here Vainstra. on Saturday night, I think you're going to see some fireworks. Lovely stuff once again from Veenstra. Second leg is Tony to throw first. And obviously being the last one before Christmas. Feel free to come down your Christmas jumpers. I'd like to see one activity out there. Does that mean you'll be wearing that one again? No, what I'm, I've got a special one for Saturday. I have a Christmas Day shirt. Hey, T5. And I'm going to wear my Christmas Day shirt for the last. So it's getting two outings this year. Normally it gets one out in a year. But this year... As it's a special occasion, the last Super Series day of 2022, I will be wearing my Christmas Day shirt. Groovy. 58. Can't wait till you see it. You'll be impressed. Any thoughts on Tony Newell right now? I mean, he's reacting. 80. 140, 136 in this leg, but... I think at the moment, especially in terms of Group A, he's racing. 140. Race his rank. 140 I think he'll be well aware of that. And I think he'll be playing for places now in terms of what Group E goes in. Will it be B or will it be C? Yeah, that was my question to you. Are, are you talking there that you think it's over for him finishing top? 
Or do you still think he's got aspirations of, you know, finishing in second or third? Or right now, is he just playing his arm, getting prepared himself for the long haul hey, of Thursday morning, four. Friday morning? Going forward, I mean, his aspirations literally will be short-term goals, win every single game that I'm playing in. But I do think that we're now talking Group third, B as five. his best in terms Richard, of what he can get from this group. I, I can't see him catching... I, I just don't see Landman and Veenstra both yeah. coming off the pace. Yeah. One of them might, but the, both of them aren't going to. And I think for that reason, Tony Newell is no struggling to win that all day. Richard, you require that four big one. He's struggling. And that was when you talk about mindset, and that will be on his mind that he had nine he darts earlier. Second doing. leg, Richard Veenstra. Exactly that. And Veenstra, the way he just does that inside, he's thinking, get in there. Come on. And once again, Matt, look, it's Richard to averaging first. over 100. Two darts at a double. Two darts hit. Did this in his opening game against Adam Warner. Four from four in that hey, 100% of the doubles. But that dart, that last dart from Tony Newell will be concerning on the basis that it wasn't like he just clipped the wrong side of the wire. It was like he was throwing for a back 100. And it's hard from getting his alignment right. Uh, it's really important about... Get that handprint, so as it's letting go, just for his One, exit, the, the replication is the same every time. Because when he come, when he comes across his face like that, it can't be easy. So when when you when you know you're not throwing straight, i.e., not the confidence, seven. not hitting a big one there, that can make you think for the rest of the day, rest of the week. One hundred and forty. Impressive, isn't he, Veenstra? When he's in full flow. Yeah, and I mean. He tends to back up the 180s as well. That'd be an interesting stat to see after he hits a 180. Because Richard, sometimes you get a 186. 180 and hit a 60 and you sort of half the score a little bit, where Veenstra tends to follow it up. 88. He's followed it up with a 140 the last couple of times. I'll be casting my eye over that and keeping that one to attention. 174. Richard, you're right. Well, it's Veenstra with double four. Game shot in the third leg. Richard Veenstra. And Tony hadn't even walked back to the hockey there, thinking, lovely one, seven, four, great setup. Am I going to have well, a dart to double to before you've even got back? The dulcet tone of Owen Bing shouting game shot. And the third leg to Veenstra, not what you want to hear. A worrying stat for me, Matt, is Tony Newell. This is his third game of the day, and he's won one leg. 100. He's just relentless on that 20 bed right now is Veenstra, and it's a lovely feeling. When, you, when you're playing well, when you're in total control of a game, you're in a good headspace, honestly. It's, it's a lovely feeling out there. You've got the contrasting Tony Newell where every dart probably feels like an effort right now. 100. And for Veenstra, just pinging them off the barrels of the others. Just looking at his numbers to see how he reacts to a 180 being hit against him. His hey, average actually goes up. up. So his average goes up to a 90 after a max is hit against him where he's sort of running over an 87, 60. 99. So a slight increase. So he's, he's a very reactive player, I think, is one thing we can say. I just don't think he's a big thinker. I just think he's... Totally focused on his job. I mean, this is great to see Tony playing like 140. this. One hundred and forty. Tony's averaging in excess of ninety-three here. I know the most important stat is the fact that he's losing three 0 but there's positive for him here. One hundred and thirty-seven. Tony he's just like a steam train, isn't he? Once he gets that momentum going, you don't feel like he's ever going to miss. Which treble nineteen? She's got a dart at tops. Game and Well done, Tony leg. Newell. Superb Tony darts, 117 finish. That's his best of the week. And it's 3 1. And we talk about that catalyst, we talk about that spark. Looks like it's Richard to throw first. But that Game is. On. My only worrying stat from that is he needs to break Richard Veenstra twice in the next three legs. And right at this 58. moment, that would be a tough task for anybody. Game number six yesterday was Richard Veenstra versus William Mand Mandigas. Richard Veenstra had three 180s in that game and averaged 99.77. That was game six. The game you are watching right now is game number seven. And once 100. again, Richard Veenstra, at this sort of time of day, is producing his best darts of the week. 
there could be something that's said here in terms of the amount of preparation that he's got when he gets to this point or the just the time of day just feels comfortable around this point because he certainly produces his best around this hour do you think he's just keeping it Aye, very very great. simple as well 100 140 100 he just there's no histrionics there's no with arm waving no shaking of heads he just keeps it very very simple 76 The thing here might utilize 90. the ball. Does that well to leave the 170 for the match? Something that is quite an achievement. Imagine if we get a nine data. 140. I, th I think at that point, Matt wants me to say 170 to win a match forward slash Gary Anderson, but he's not getting that from me. Not a chance. 58. It's only require 100. Two doubles. The old fashioned route of double ten. Game show on the fifth leg. This is great dart from Tony Neal. Well, this is the kind of dart. I had him on the Pro Tour for such a long time. The kind of dart I took him to the ADC Championships. Simply against Tony to throw A few first. months ago. Game on. Quality affair we've got here. It's been a great, great match. Yeah, I like that dart, really. I sat nicely for Tony just to lay 60. one on top he does and takes out the double 10 that's his first 100 plus checkout of the week so far and this is positives 60. for Tony Newell he lost 4 nearly he lost 4-1 his last two legs he's had no 100 finishes in the last two legs he's gone 117 and 100 there so 121 it's good to see bounce back ability 100. And I did say he couldn't do this against Richard Venture, breaking him twice in three legs. And we know what my predictions are like. Well, he's halfway there because he's got one of them so far. This is the holder throw, but he's just opened the door. 100. There is opportunity here for Venstra. He has got himself ahead in this one tony needs two trebles here to stay in control and to keep his fate in his own hands hey t1 yes opportunity knocks vinstra a 140 be very nice at this stage and just ping that on top of there 140 he's good on the eye isn't he in full floys lovely rhythm about him You tend to no, find that the players that have that little bit of pace just have that sort of enjoyable factor to watch like veenstra has got here. 41. I hope to have left that a little bit more simple. Tony Newell could take us all the way with this 112. Again, he's lost that line. It's still on. Treble 19. Lost the line again. So this is Nine. match opportunity for Veenstra. For three wins out of three. On moving Tuesday. Double ten. Forty. It's only For his third century in a row. Tony Newell. And he's 88. He might treble 20 or treble 16 as his options. Yeah, he'd be a bit frustrated with that, especially the way he's been finishing their last couple of legs. Beanstra, eyes on the prize. Sixteen. You can never ever Tony predict this game. 48. Never. Well, Tony's made a bit of a mess of it, but he's got himself an opportunity due to those missed darts there from Richard Veenstra. Got one more dart in his hand. Sixteen. And that could be the final Richard opportunity for Tony four. Newell. Richard Veenstra, double two. He's thrown at this target a lot today. Going a lot of the Dutchies have left this match. one on purpose, Richard and Richard Veenstra uses it well and gets the victory another two points that's three from th three so far today from richard vaintree matches yesterday where he won three matches and got himself six points so that moves him into 12 but unlike yesterday he's still got two more games to go and two games in hand richard vaintree tipped to finish 
top of the table today by myself and we'll see how that pans out throughout the rest of the day coming up next Willem Mandiguez takes on the man who is battling Richard Vainstra for top and that is Chris Landman Welcome back. Well, Richard Veinstra is on a roll here at the Modus Super Series on Tuesday. A third victory for Veinstra of the day, and it sees him uh, competitive at the top of the table. 4-2 over Tony Newell, who has only won three legs so far today. Uh, a 92 average for Veinstra. Good stuff from him, and we can see his movement up the table now tied on points at the top with fellow Dutchman Chris Landman though he does have a game in hand and that will be against the other Netherlands native in the group Willem Mandigas who has also won all of his matches so far today it's complete Dutch domination in this group remarkable stuff so far uh, two of them are going to go head to head as I said and yesterday it was dominant from this man Chris Landman who won it 4-0 by virtue of sneaking that dart into the double eight. Uh, so as I said, an uh, incredible run by these three players from Holland so far. It's actually the first seven matches of the day that have been won by Dutchmen. That's obviously going to extend to eight, but which of them will be the first to be defeated today? Will it be a repeat of that consistency from Chris Lamman that we've seen so far? Or can Mandigas, who's much improved today, carry on that upsurge, that upturn in form for him. Let's find out in the company of our commentary team, Glenn and Matt. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Absolutely spot on. It's going to be the eighth victory for a Dutch player today. We've just been in the players' lounge there. The three of them sort of practicing together as well. So there's a real bond between them all. But it's vitally important when you walk on that stage, that friendship's put to a side, especially for Willem here, um, because... You know, we do talk about moving Tuesday, and he's the. And it's a surprise to me that today is the. You know, it, it's him we're no, talking like about. This first. is a massive opportunity Game for him on. right now because Landman, I'm sure, is still a heavy favourite, but it's Mandigas who's who's been the player of the day for me so far, and for me he's on a bit of a free oh, roll D6. here. I'd love to see the very very uh, best of him uh, against uh, Landman, who 
We just think you can do nothing Soon wrong at the Steve. moment. Not just you who it's caught the eye of. When we get here in the morning, the first thing I do is I like to take a grab of all the odds that the bookies are putting out Soon in the morning. Steve. And they had Willem Mandiguez at nine to four and one to three, Chris Landman. One I can tell you 100. that before the off, that nine to four got gobbled right the way in to six to four. That is a major market move on Willem Mandiguez to win this match. And that is due to that increased performance today. Just remember, gamble responsible, 18 plus, the gambleaware.org. But well, like I say, it's really good to see him. It's nice to see that smile on Willem's face as I went through the room there. But this is an opportunity. I'd be really disappointed 42. if he gives me a mid-70 average here, which he was doing yesterday. This is a game where well, he can really show everybody what he's about because he's a, he's a very, very talented player. Incredibly, they've never played each other uh, until yesterday. Uh, I was looking through all my stats and, and everything there, so I'm sure we've crossed paths in local comps, Dutch Super Leagues, etc. Game show. Landman once day. again, 15 Chris data, Landman. break a throw. As much as we've chatted there about Willem, this guy just is like a juggernaut and he just continues to relentlessly progress. So Chris to throw first. And like I said, just whets the appetite of the Landman versus Veenstra game. So make sure you tune in for that one. 100. Yeah, I just had a look while I've still got the odds up in front of me. The bookies cannot split that one. 45. Five to six apiece. Do you have any indication for the well, viewers in which way that one might go? Well, I'm going to stick with Veenstra because that's, you know, I'm not going to change my mind and, and how excited that would then make Wednesday. Um, so... You just get the feeling if Landman does a five out of five today, it's going to suddenly, he's, you know, he's, he's opening daylight. And like you rightly said there, I can't see Landman not suddenly not playing well, but then and forward slash and Richard Veenstra not playing well at the same time. So um, I think for the neutral, being the neutral, I'd like to see a, a Veenstra win in that one. But Mandigas can still win this game, though. He hasn't come out the traps at all. He's averaging in, in the 60s at the moment, and that was my only concern for him. Well, he did exactly this yesterday, didn't he? He started the day well and then just sort of tailed off as the day went. Is this the start of the decline? Does he need one of those Chris Landman cheese sandwiches? Ball. 120. He decides not to go for it and just sets it up. When your luck is in, your luck is in. Just feel 44. the word for me Which right now, Matt, 40. is focus. I just don't see Willem yeah, just in that the zone right now. Chris Landman, Landman. He's, just, he's a machine, isn't he? I wonder if there's also that point, though, for Willem where, so look, it's Willem to like throw us, first. he's made the same observation. These two players are not both going to come off the pace. I, don't, I can't win this group. But that's 44. why I felt it was a bit of a free roll for him. You know, this is an op opportunity to get in the top three. You know, the, it's un unlikely you're going to top 100. the group now after a very, very disappointing day yesterday. But you've come out the traps amazingly well this morning. And for me, this was the one game that would be no nerves. I'm going to show people tuning in to Motor Super Series that this is what I'm all about. And Saturday night is still a big possibility. Because last time I was here, I watched Andreas Harrison. And he had a dreadful Monday. Yet by for the rest of the week... He was, for me, the best player you know, in the venue, but the damage was done on that Monday. So Willem's got to take his opportunity on what we call moving Tuesday. 60. In mean, the best of seven, you know, all of a sudden, if he can sneak, I mean, that's much better darts. 100. I think the word you use, they're just going in with a little bit more force all of a sudden, a little bit more meaning. One hundred when it's two one, you're back in the game. You can't give this landman any chances whatsoever because he's averaging well in excess of ninety six now. Now, when we look at the league table, it is Adam Ver Warner that he's trying to chase down. Adam's next game is against Luke Getty. Luke Getty, bottom of the table, and. He's lost both of his games so far today, quite convincingly four one. So William, you'd rightly 80. make Adam favourite in that game, which means. This game's becoming more important for Willem, who is making a mess of this. He wanted 120 
and 40. He's hit the 70 one, he's hit the five, and he's only just after six darts got himself down to the double. 54. Well, if you fancied that. 40. Like I said, maybe Willem's had a bit of luck today. And if he's 2-1 down after three legs, he, I think Game he would take I mean, the third He hasn't been in this Willem match Mandigans. whatsoever. His setup play has been awful. His scoring's been all over the place. But it's only 2-1. And if he breaks well, Landon here, sorry, all of a sudden, he then becomes favourite because he's got the dart in two of the last three legs. As someone Fave once said, five. it's a funny old game. Don't you think that dart's going in with a bit more authority 100. now? 100. Oh, definitely. He needs to get some movement in that arm, get some pace into the arm. Definitely One does offset the fact that the shoulder is not supporting the full extension. I like the way he deaccelerates into there and then accelerates that forward press there. The deacceleration there, bang. 60. And that's when he's at his best. And then it's replication after that. So... And that's what I said day one. Fundamentally, he's got a lovely throw. There's a couple of things that you've picked 59. up on there. A couple of things I've picked up on. But it's just that deacceleration, acceleration. Deacceleration, and then just make sure you follow through. 100. And you're pointing them fingers to the floor. Well, Landman, a bit like Vingstrom. 120. Not even aiming, which sounds madness, what you're talking about. It's just all rhythm. Just... All rhythm, and if one go in, they usually go in. Whereas you watch a man because they was aiming for the target there. One hundred. Two Christian entirely different throws here. Another one of them would be nice. Sixty-four. Actually went for the eighteens there, which made sense away that second dart. But Manda has a chance here. Perfect dart for him there, but he tried to use the bullseye. 79. That last dart does keep him in the leg. Well, it Double might keep 16. him in the leg. 87. Willem, you require 62. And these are the type of finishes that I keep repeating myself to make it a good or a great player. 42. Chris, you require 16. And the difference between 2-2 two, two and 3-1 in a best of Chris seven Landman. is monumental. But they're the type of finishers, 62, 64. So when you're practicing tonight, practice on them areas. Don't to focus birds. all your efforts on just pinging the treble 20 all the time. It's very nice, and there's times when you have to be the biggest scorer in the world. But many, One many games hundred. will depend on how your clutch finishing, your two dark combinations, your three dark combos. That's what the game's all about at the end. 140. What do you say about games and ends? This game might be coming to an end very soon. Chris Landman looks like he's had enough 60. of it. He's motoring to the finishing line. And when you look at the stats and the averages, there was an absolute massive chasm between the two of them. 41. Well, Willem is still hanging in. 180s have been a feature of his game today. He was looking for his first one in this match. He hit four in his first game against Adam. Three against Tony. So seven 180s in his first couple of matches. Not got Nine, one yet in six. this. Need the player finding a max. But Chris Landman will not worry too much about maxes. 45. Well, yeah, 2.20 before Willem sees off the 105. You're back on the treble 20 bed. 38. And that's the disappointment which Matt's touched on an awful lot today about people's setup play. Like you just feel like you threw it. Just giving up opportunity to land and who's never in this leg. And that, well, you start, that, one dart, that makes it 67 so much more difficult, but what a dart that is. 63. Chris should require 40. And Landman, can it continue this trend? 20. Well, let me require well, there four. is a trend appearing, and that is double two. And when these Dutchies go there, they tend to find success. He's getting closer. 
Coming over to the right-hand side. No Can't score. find it. And Landman Christian required 20. will have three more darts now to wrap up this match. Game show Dominant the match. virtuoso. Chris he is the Lammer. man to beat right now. The big smile on your face tells you that Landman's charge continues. He's top of the table. Just whets the appetite for a massive clash coming up soon between Landman and Veenstra. But next up, Adam Warner, Luke Getty. Don't miss that one. Consistent Chris Landman leads the way still in Group A. Thereafter, a uh, good win against his fellow Dutchman, Willem Mandigas, who stays in fourth place. Landman, he just keeps getting his nose in front in terms of points. He's building up that leg difference as well. Uh, good performance from him. A 4-1 win on plus 20 now and 14 points in that column. Two ahead of Richard Veenstra and now six clear of Adam Warner who's in action next against bottom of the table Luke Getty and Warner did win the match yesterday he took out this 110 to lead the game 2-0 and it was a game that he went on to win in a last leg decider but only after Luke had missed match darts in that one Warner one of his four wins from his five matches yesterday. Uh, but the pair of them have both suffered uh, a brace of 4-1 defeats today. So looking to turn around their, their fortunes in the middle match of the day for this darting duo. Uh, well, Getty's kind of been lukewarm so far this week. Adam, warmer. I'll get me coat. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Even Adam's laughing at that one, look. The circumstances are pretty clear now. Uh, this is looking like a two-horse race now between Landman and Veenstra, unless, and I emphasise the word unless, Adam can win this game against Getty. Now, if I was Veenstra or Landman in the players' area right now, I'd be cheering for, for Luke because all of a sudden then you, you're breaking it down to two players who are going to win this uh, competition because, as Matt said a couple of times this week, you, can't, you know, it's possible that Veenstra is going to drop off. It's possible that Landman's going to drop off. 
but we can't see the pair of them all of a sudden hitting a brick wall. Uh, and for me, the only person who can stop that now is is the guy in your picture right there. So if Getty wins this, hey, I think we're looking at a two-horse race. Best. And if Adam wins, Game it just on. keeps it very, very interesting. It will, but on the same aspect, you sort of feel that for Mandigas and Newell, they'll want hey, to see T4. Adam lose this game because their hopes of Group B will become a lot slimmer if Adam wins this and tightens his position on that third place. Good point. 140. Chris Murphy asked me at the very start of the day, he says, what sort of moves do you think we're going to see in, in terms of the table? And I was quite happy that I've seen enough after one day to suggest Four, that the top five. three and the bottom three was going to stay where they was. It was just who ends in which positions in, in those places. Yeah, I felt like yesterday was... 80% of the chat was about Adam 60. Warner, whereas today we haven't spoken awful lot. So I want all his uni teammates, his mates, friends. I haven't got as many messages today from you. Let me hear you from you. Let's have a chat about 95. the questions. I'll, I'll have a little look at social media now. See what, any questions for the pair of us. But please follow MSS Darts. Get your questions in. It does a 180, Edgar TV. Hey, T4. Please come and join us on Saturday night if you're anywhere near Portsmouth. Tickets are free at dartshop.tv. We'd love to pop out and have a chat with you. No, watch some T3. fantastic darts. So let's have a little look what we've got here. Oh, my good friend Henry. I'm loving Dozer and Edgar together. I heard that they hated each other. That's not true. From Josh Wills, nothing beats an afternoon practice with MSS Darts on the TV with commentary from the two geniuses. 100. Especially Glenn Durant, who's much better looking. Oh, no, that doesn't say that. But in general, Darts question for Matt. Who do you think is going to win the Worlds, Matt? As we look for top there for Adam. Look, you require 84. And forget if he's going to make that move now. These are the type of finish. He's probably going to incorporate the bullseye. Oh, it's double 11. 62. That's just the kind of week he's Adam, having. Adam, require 20. He'd have just put away some of them doubles, Matt. You know, it could be, the table could be looking totally different. Yeah, he's carved himself out opportunities, just not been able to take those. Adam hasn't really taken too many opportunities Ten. of his own today. I love I, I your assessment earlier. You know, the focus is on him now. Nobody knew an awful lot about him yesterday. But right now, we'll find out a little bit more about him. And he'll be the better player for it. Six. Struggling to win a dart with a double with three darts. Ten. The idea of splitting it like that. But this is a scrappy opening leg. And Adam composes himself. Game shot on the first. Delivers. Day. Adam And he's happy. I like that. I hate it when I see a dart player after they've missed a couple of darts to double and they get it and they mopes to the board Second or they apologise or, oh, no, I won the leg. That's what you want to do. You want to win the leg. Be happy. Adam's happy. Like that. And let your opponent know. You've missed your dart to the double. Unlucky son. There's the fist pump. Have it. But you did ask, you asked who's going to win the World Championships. The PDC World Darts Championship starts on Thursday. And for most people, that's the start of the Christmas period when the darts comes on the telly. I've got 60. some predictions, obviously, over on my YouTube channel uh, for the earlier rounds. But I think when it comes to who's going to win, I can't see past Van Gerwen. I think Van Gerwen wins it. And I think he wins it by beating Michael Smith in the final. Well, I'm on Edgar TV on Thursday, so I'll be giving my predictions. I'm not really sure 100% what Wendy the questions three. are, so I'll get some questions to Matt. I will be giving away a set of darts as well, which Matt will decide. And all you've got to do is follow MSS darts. And then Matt will do what he needs to do, and he'll pick a winner hey, from the followers on that. We'll get onto Twitter, get onto MSS darts, follow, give them a follow. And on Thursday night, I'll be giving a set of darts away. And I'll try and get them to you so you get Nine, them for Christmas. Six. And you record 136. Did you visit to buy three ghosts last night? 
120. When I say give away, I mean, <laughs> you can pay me later. All I've got to do is just pay the postage, and the postage is 55 pounds. 95. And and 13 data 16. for Adam. Blows his hand. Game show on the sort of struggled a little bit yesterday, Adam keeping Warner. his hands and fingers warm. It's really important to some players. I was definitely one of them players. I really, really struggled with a cold. Remember the that competition at Minehead, the OK Open? Did you play in that one? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, quite rough, that one. But don't you not suffer, if I remember. Don't you mind not playing in the cold? There was somebody who actually... I mean, for us, it was Paul Knight, and I don't know if you've ever heard of that guy from County Durham. He didn't mind playing in in, in a freezer. Yeah, I don't oh, mind too much. Want... I'm a shorts all year round sort of guy, so I don't mind it too much. But I just remember like going to the toilet and things, and like there being like a block of ice on top of the toilet. I mean, 26. it was all right for you though, because you was out quite early, so you managed to go home early, didn't you? I thought you were going to say because I was on the toilet most of the time. <laughs> yes, I was quite proud of that award off on Edgar TV. The dark player that goes to the toilet the most in a pro tour. And he counted that I went 18 times in four hours. Ninety-six. That might get some Twitter interaction. A couple of links and suggestions of places you can go for that. Just follow MSS Darts. Let's have a bit of fun on Edgar TV on Thursday. Someone will have set up my darts. Twenty-two. After that sloppy opener, this has been good here from Adam. He's really stepped it up. Luke looks like he wants to keep pace with it now. He had a 13 data in the second leg. It was a massive improvement. His average has gone up to 92 and a half. And he's threatening a potential break of throw here. In a fixture he 4-3 yesterday. You know, I'm really looking forward to having a chat with him. Uh, I would never bother him in the first three days. Double 18. 66. Ah, once again, Luke will be just thinking, where Maybe are those doubles? 38. But I'd love to get a, an assessment from Adam. I mean, I heard his interview earlier. But it's, you know, really good to... I, I'm hoping he's seeing every positive, because I'm just seeing positive after positive for this guy. 60. He's got such a bright future. 36. And he looks like he has the appetite for the game. But it's 36 for Getty. Game's on the third leg. And at Luke last Getty. he's thinking, that's where the double is. He's back in this match. Fourth leg, it's Adam to throw first. Adam sort his Game quiff on. out. And gets back to it. Nice stance. Just a little bit of upper body movement there, but it's very, very solid. 59. I'm going to ask him about his tungsten tomorrow. A, I was saying yes, it looks like a really old-fashioned dart. But then again, people put various things on the darts these days. Colours and coatings, but to me it looks like an old-fashioned tungsten. Probably found in the university mess. Forty-five. Match has just gone a little bit quiet. Ninety-six. And in them times, it. Forty-one. Yeah, I used to say thirty-three percent, but I think people like Gezi Price and Van Gogh have just. Totally changed that. We used to say that the 90 average was the the benchmark. But like I said, now, you know, the, if you're not averaging over 100, 100. you're not going to win pro tours, euro tours, and certainly not going to win majors these days. Um, and that percentage is now is well over 40%. The, the top players now, they're playing well with uh, looking at 50%, 50% on the averages. But I totally agree with you. I used to always look at my stats, and if I was anywhere near that 33% of 40, and you're always finishing well. Double 12. Game Clinical. On the Impressive flag. stuff. Adam Warner. Adam Warner is quietly but effectively and efficiently gotten on with his job here. It's Luke's darts, I think, here. I think Adam thinks it is, unless I've got my match wrong. Luke to throw first. Game on. I got something right, Matt. First time for everything. It's only took you, what, 53 years? Mm. 52. In terms of... The stats and the averages that were said there about the finishers over the last 12 months. No, the player who has been the best on doubles hit 
is Damon Hetter, wow. 44.56% over a 12 month period. That's very, very good. That's not too far off the one in two nice. sort of nice. categories. Actually, overtaken James Wade. Third place, though, Ryan Joyce, 42.55. Yeah. And he had to go through the qualifier to book his place at the 78. World Championship, as did Jeff Smith, who is the eighth best finisher over the last 12 months. 41.73%. I bet Ryan Joyce is nine out of the ten of them with a double 16. He's absolutely phenomenal at that double. And that's why Damon Head is my out outside bet. Without giving too much away before. 190. Lovely 180 there from Luke. I just tried looking at Glenn Durant, but it doesn't have one. I'm guessing that's because you didn't win I many didn't legs. I did win a leg. 99. <laughs> Look, we've got 148. Do you know, I used to look at every single stat. I remember I was in the top five. I think I averaged 90, in 2019 for the hey, year. I averaged 92. 98. I mean, you've got 164. The highest score in 2022 was 97. Fifty-seven. Couple Luke of options for Luke here on sixty-six. Travel ten or bullseye. He likes that tops area. But tops for bring another leg 26. back. Twenty-six. That was well thrown down. Let me require one hundred and seven. It's just a case of getting that weight and balance right. But this would hurt. He done a lovely hundred and ten finish yesterday against Luke. I think this would be even better. And double sixteen for the match. Ninety-one. Luke, you require 40. Good marker, but he steps back. Game shot on the fifth leg. Luke Getty. Classy dart there. Now you can have your throw, Adam. He was itching to get to the board last time. Six leg is Adam to throw first. That's said a couple of times Game this week. On. His thought process right now. 15 dart, please. And that, what I can't even begin to tell you what a feeling that first one goes in. You have to follow it, hence the frustration there. But you would accept 118. He'd be thinking, give me a 15 data. Then it means Luke has to hit a 12 data uh, to, to break him. 100. Yeah, when that first one goes in, in a shot where you know you need a treble, it just settles you for the next two. It almost feels like the next two are bonus darts. Darts where you can just be aggressive. 100. You've done the minimum requirement. Ninety-five. Luke is going to chase him down. He's not going to let him just canter over the line here. And when you're breathing down someone's neck and the heat is on, eighty-five. Can get a little bit scrappy, but that is why that was such a good last dart there from Adam. It just feels better, doesn't it, when it's the last dart? Not if you're the first one stuck four. behind. That's when it makes you feel a bit sick. Big advantage to Warner now. So just keep it simple. And don't go into little ones. Four, My one. first dart would have been aiming just above the treble 20 on that first one. With the tension and anxiety, sometimes that can pop in just like exactly what Luke's done there. But the little one will hurt. 98. And he's I mean, still got the advantage. He's still feeling he's got six darts at this 157. So it takes something special from Luke to do that. So it's all about setting it up. 60. Not good Maybe enough, really. 64. Four for the knee for Getty. Getty in. 88 left. That is the disappointing dart from leaving a double to leaving 83 is a big difference. And to two dart for Warner. Beautiful dart from Warner. 77. Just couldn't see it. Just couldn't execute. 83. A two darter to give Getty a chance here. We might go up a two tops here. That's how frustrating the game can be. You're fighting with yourself right now. Forty-three. So two match starts, been and gone for Adam. 
Adam, you require 20. Three more. For two points. Over to five. So double dozen Game says he always sees go match. in when he's down here. And Adam he's just watched Warner. another one go in. Adam Warner gets his first victory of the day. First two points go to him. And that's the first time we get to see Adam with one of his funky dancers up towards Chris Murphy.